Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So today is going to be a snippet from a Patreon video which is coming out in a couple weeks time where I show you how to create this procedural glass setup in Cinema 4D in terms of lighting, modeling, texturing, rendering, the whole scene setup, everything from start to finish. And I just want to show you guys a quick snippet of the actual animation portion of this. So hopefully you guys find it interesting and if you do want to watch the whole process from start to finish, the Patreon link will be in the description. Okay, thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in a bit. Peace. So let's make sure we're at frame zero and we've got our spline selected and then we're going to right click and go to the, let's find it. We're going to find something called the pose morph tag. Now it's in here somewhere. Where is it? There it is. Pose morph, rigging tags, pose morph. Now, essentially what you can do with this is you can set an initial kind of pose state and then create additional pose states and animate between them. So you can kind of guess where we're going with this. We're going to set this as our base state and we're then going to create a second one and kind of animate between them. So in this case, because we're using a spline which is built up of points, we just need to enable points in our pose morph. And now we have this new menu. So you can see we have the base pose and we have pose zero. So base pose is going to be what we currently have. And if we make sure we have pose zero selected, we can then move these points around to set this as the second pose essentially. So let's just do something really quickly just to check it's working. So I'm just going to select these and then I can press space and just move these up. So let's just see if this is working. So maybe we'll like move these out, move them up. So we have something that looks like this and let's check the pose morph. So the strength, you can see, there we go. As we go from zero to hundred, it's animating between those two point positions. So this is really cool and really easy way to set it up. So let's animate between this. So let's set the strength to zero and then go to frame 30 and set it to hundred. And we'll just play this back quickly. And you can see now it's fixed on the end position, which is weird because we just animated between them. So what we need to do is make sure we're in the animate tab. So let's select this. And now that should solve the problem. Um, I think when you're in edit, it kind of ignores any animation you've set. Uh, you just need to make sure you're in the animate tag and you should be good to go. Okay, cool. Let's make this a little bit more interesting. So I'm actually going to give it about just over a second of it by itself. Maybe we'll actually we'll go to like 30 seconds. So it's like one second just standing there and then it transitions. That is obviously way too slow. So let's bring that second keyframe back a bit. And we can make this more interesting by playing with the curves. So let's go to window F curve. And oh, don't know what I just did there. And if you haven't used this before, uh, you can basically use this to affect how the keyframes animate and the easing of them. So if I press H, it's going to frame everything in the window. I'll press control A and I'm going to select one of the easing methods. So let's go for easy ease. And now you can see if I play this back, it's got a little bit more easing to it. Now what I actually want to do is I want to like change really quickly and then ease out because we're going to have it like spring off the floor and we want it to, as it springs off, create that initial movement like pretty quickly. So we're going to change this handle to be like this and drag that up and something like this looks pretty good. We can then drag this out a little bit. And if we play this now, you're gonna see it kind of pops out really quickly and that feels a lot more interesting, a lot more dynamic. Um, and when we pair this with the glass actually kind of jumping off the floor, it's gonna look a lot more interesting. So let's just do that. And I'm actually gonna use a null for this just to have a little bit more control. Um, so what we'll do is I have a null set up here. Usually I think it's up here by default. I just moved it over. Um, again, let's hold Alt and select our null and that's gonna give it the same position as our glass object. So now we have this inside a null, we can actually use the null to keyframe the height. And the beauty of this is that say we wanted to swap out this object for something else, we've already got the animation baked into the null. So we could swap this out for anything else and it will just follow the animation we've set here. So this is a much better way to work because say we animated the Y position of the glass, if we wanted to swap this out for any other object, 
you then have to re-keyframe it on your new object. So it just makes it a little bit more fiddly. This is a much more kind of procedural um, way of working. So let's set a keyframe here, zero centimeters, and we'll do that just like a second before actually we'll do it on the frame that it transitions so let's move that keyframe to frame 30 and we'll set this to like 45 and we'll just increase this on the y-axis to maybe something like this and maybe we'll just adjust our camera and we'll hit the diamond button to set the keyframe so now we have something like this. And again, we need to change the easing of the curves. So let's go to timeline F curve and let's press H to frame everything. And let's press the easy easing. There we go. That is cool. And we'll just change the curve so that it has something similar to the glass. Now let's play this back. Boom. Cool. So. We've got that going up, that looks interesting. And because the transition and the movement of the glass are like matched up, it kind of helps to like mask that initial movement of the glass animating, which feels a lot more interesting. Cool, so now we want it to like drop back down, so it's pretty easy. We're just gonna go back to maybe like frame 70, set the position back to zero, keyframe that. And then on the pose morph, we'll do the same thing. Uh, so we go to our spline, back to zero, hit keyframe. And for this, we kind of want it to like have like a dramatic pause at the top where it like kind of really slows down and then it ramps back down and hits the floor. You can see if we just play it at the moment, we have that initial jump, but then it kind of like slowly falls back down. It doesn't really feel that realistic. So we're gonna go to our pose morph and we're going to change the handle of this to like be upright. And then we'll drag this out as well you can hold shift to kind of drag these sliders independently. So you can see if I drag them by default, it's going to do both sides. If you hold shift and drag, it's going to like disconnect those handles. And now we can drag that right out like this. Maybe we'll move this in a little bit to frame. What frame is this? 58. Let's go 60 just for a nice round number. Uh, so now we have something like this. And then we'll do the same with the null as well. So change that to frame 60, change that to be upright. And now we have something like this. So let's play this back and see how it looks. Nice, that's looking cool. Uh, we're actually just change the amount of frames to 60. So change this from 250 to 60. Um, and then let's play this. Awesome. Now let's just add a final kind of secondary motion and for that we'll add some rotation to our glass. So let's go to that initial frame where everything jumps. So frame 30, add a keyframe, go to 45, add a keyframe and let's rotate this by 360. So it has quite a quick initial rotation, but then for frame 60, we'll only add an additional, let's see, 180 frames. 180 uh, degrees in rotation. Again, let's play this back, have a look at this. Now we need to kind of match up that rotation with how the rest of the animation feels. So we're gonna kind of create the same curve that we've created for the others. So let's go to rotation H, press H to frame everything, easy ease this, and we'll just set this to be upright like this, and then because the rotation is actually increasing, um, the curve is going up instead of back down again. So we just need to change this handle to be downwards so that essentially this is kind of slowing down at this point and then the rotation will ramp back up. So let's actually just rotate this so that it never completely stops. It's always kind of still moving ever so slightly. And then let's just drag this up so that this has kind of like a smoother curve. Now, if we play this back, Everything should be looking hunky-dory. Cool. That looks pretty good to me. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this snippet from the Patreon tutorial. If you do want to know more about how we made this scene, how we textured it, how we lit it, and all the other fine-tuning of details which we go into, you can check out the Patreon with the link in the description. Okay, thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you in a bit. Peace.